Hi, I'm Josh Ackman with Park Industries Customer Service Department. On this guide, we will be showing you how to replace the drawbar activator. And in this scenario, we are going to be upgrading it to the drawbar activator that you do not need to remove the air cylinder when you have to change your water union. So to start out here, we're gonna remove our water lines. We do have our e-stop pushed in, air and water are turned off to the machine. Take our water line off and our drain line. We're gonna start with the top fitting. It's a 10 millimeter to remove the water line fitting. And then the bottom fitting is a seven millimeter hex head. Once that is removed, we're gonna move to the other side here and proceed with taking the anti-rotation bracket and other airlines off. Okay, now that we're on the other side, we're gonna start by removing our airlines to the air cylinder. I'm gonna use a half inch wrench to push up on the Kamazi fitting to release it. Tuck our airlines back. And then we're going to remove our anti-rotation bracket. Anti-rotation bracket is um, directional, so make sure you take note on the short side is going towards the front of the machine. Now that we have the anti-rotation bracket removed, we're gonna remove the four bolts two on each side for the air cylinder, so we can pull the air cylinder up, up and out. Um, using a three quarter inch socket. And then we'll remove the other two from the other side. Okay, once we have all four bolts removed, we can lift up and take out our air cylinder. And we're gonna move this to a workbench to remove the um, old drawbar activator. Okay, now that we have our air cylinder offer machine mounted to our bench, we clamped it down right away here to hold that. We are going to remove our old activator. So we're gonna start by removing the nut in the inside. I'm gonna use an air impact here and a inch and an eighth socket on it. Set my nut to the side. Now we need to unthread the activator from the air cylinder. I'm gonna use a 7 8 wrench to hold my air cylinder in place with a pry bar here to break that loose. Now, depending on how your Loctite's set up, um, you might, yours might thread a little bit harder coming off. Um, just hold that air cylinder tight and just keep spinning that around until you're completely off. Now we'll take our new activator that has our cutout in it. Just gonna start, make sure the threads start on. Threads start nice, so I'm gonna pull it back off and lock tights. Our rod here.
thread this on as far as we can by hand, and then we'll use our pry bar to thread it the rest of the way. Snug up that completely tight onto our cylinder. Now we'll take a little bit more Loctite for our nut. Now we're just gonna snug up that nut. We're not gonna hit it too hard with the impact but just that it's tight. And we're also gonna use our wrench to hold our air cylinder. Okay, now that our activator is on, we're gonna reset up here and we're gonna put it on the machine and we'll have to uh, cycle, the act or cycle the air cylinder and move that activator into the position that we need here. Okay, now that we're back up by the machine, just gonna make sure my surface is nice and clean here so everything sits flat back down in there. And then also making sure the bottom surface and everything is cleaned also. Take our air cylinder, set it back on, remembering that your fittings are going to the back. And we're just going to start our bolts here. Now the cylinder is extended a little bit here, so you do see that it's sitting up a little bit. I'm just gonna start my bolts to make sure nothing falls off and hook up my air lines and then we will, uh, once I turn my air back on, that will retract in. Okay, now that we have our, we're powered back up, we have our air on, um, we're just gonna go around and snug these bolts up. Try to keep your um, distance on the front edge here even so your air cylinder is not sitting crooked and then we'll snug these up okay now that all our bolts are our air cylinder is snug down and tight then uh we're gonna we need to rotate the anti-rotation bracket and you need to do this while the cylinder is stroking so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use an inch and an eighth wrench and I'm going to put it on the top here. And I can see I gotta turn this way. So I'm just gonna keep slight pressure on it and I'm gonna cycle the drawbar here with our manual tool release button. Make sure your tool is out of the spindle first. And uh, I apologize for the noise here. We'll try editing as much as we can out, but it will make some air noise. slowly turning. I'm just going to poke my head in to see how well it's lined up. And that looks uh, pretty centered there. So we'll stop right there. Okay, so after you get that spun, how you know you're really close to in place is we're going to take our anti-rotation bracket and see if that fits in. The small side goes to the front of the machine. We're just gonna slide that up. And the holes are slide, so you do have a little play there, but. Them snugged up and then we'll take our wrench.
tighten them down. Now our anti-rotation bracket is in. We're going to go back to the other side and put our fittings in. Oh yeah, I'm going to start with the bottom fitting first. Seven millimeter Allen head. Our top fitting in, 10 millimeter. Once that's in, we can connect our lines. Now that our drain line and our water line are connected here, we will go back to the other side and we need to set our cylinder gap. So to set our cylinder gap, we need our gapping tool. Make sure yours is not too rusted up, clean up the rust if you need. And we're going to slide that right above this silver piece. There is a document on this also how to do it but we'll slide that in there and we're going to I'm going to use the manual tool release button you can also use on your screen your extend draw bar button but I can see here I'm just a little it wiggles a little bit here so it means it's a little loose if you can't pull it out then it's a little tight so then we will go up to our top and adjust it. Inch and an eighth wrench on here again. Crack that loose. So when the draw bar is up, it's easier to extend it. I need to come down a little bit more. So I need the whole stroke to come down. So I'm actually gonna spin this top one up a little bit. I'm just kind of watching my numbers as where I'm at so I know how much I move. I went about 10, 10 thousandths there. And now I can not pull that out. So I'm gonna release it. I went about 10 before, so we're gonna try five. Going back five. Still a little tight. So it's just a little loose, so I'm just going to turn it a hair. And right there, I can feel slight drag on my gapping tool. So right there is where I want to lock it down. Now here, I'm going to extend my draw bar again, and I'm going to run to the screen and extend it because when it's pushing down on it, it's easier to lock this when it's up in the air and you turn this nut, you have a higher chance of rotating your collar here that's setting your gap. Okay, on your screen, I'm gonna extend my draw bar here. So that extends. You do need to be logged in to make sure you can extend it. So now we're extended. Just gonna snug that nut up and I'm going to check my cylinder gap again. And right there I can just, I don't have movement up and down but I can just feel it drag slightly there. So everything is set up with that then. The last thing to do would be to capture your extended position. So we'll go back to the screen. You can see our current position right now is at zero. Um, so that is good. Yours might vary a couple thousand, but we'll just still hit capture. Um, 
if you do have a big, a really big variance, then we might want to double check everything, make sure everything's set up properly. But now that uh, everything is set up, we can put our tool back on our spindle, put our cover back on, and we can get to operating. As always, if you have any questions, please let our customer service department know, and uh, we would be glad to help. Thank you.